Hey, hi there, and welcome back to another episode of Sit and Spin with me, your host, Joe. And look who's back. It's Norman the Drowsy Dog. I know he's passed out here, but believe it or not, he's excited to be here. This is what he wants more than anything. He just wants to be able to sit next to me and fall asleep. That's his bag. That's what he likes to do. Well, mostly. But uh, he was pitching a fit upstairs. He didn't want to be left alone. So I figured I'd risk it. Got him up in all his gear to help get him down here. Made it down here in one piece, so that's good. Hopefully we'll have equal success getting him back upstairs. But you're not here to find out about him. At least maybe you are. I don't know. But hopefully you're here to hear me talk about some groovy new stuff in music, which I have for you today. This is something actually fairly recent. It actually came out at the tail end of last year, back in December. And that is... Made of Stone, the new documentary from the Stone Roses. And in the absence of other groovy new stuff coming out this year, I'm going to get this. Uh, the Stone Roses, of course, if you are unfamiliar with them, and shame on you if you don't know them, are a seminal 90s band out of Manchester, UK. They got their start back in the early 80s, releasing a, single, a series of singles and EPs from like 1985 up until 1988 before they put out their debut album in 1989 on Silvertone Records, The Stone Roses. The band, of course, consisted of vocalist Ian Brown, guitarist John Squire, bassist Gary Manny Moonfield, and drummer Alan Rennie Wren. Hey, I got that all out in one shot this time. Had a number of successful singles and songs like Fool's Gold, uh, I Want to Be Adored, Sally Cinnamon, Made of Stone, I Am the Resurrection, Waterfall. They kind of mixed elements of Manchester house and rave scene along with uh, classic British rock. Uh, some John Squire did a lot of cool, very Jimmy Page blues influenced guitar riffs and stuff, which was I, what the part I liked about them. Uh, Ian, Vol Ian Brown tended to sing stuff kind of in a hush, whispered tone sometimes, which just kind of set them apart from other bands and gave them an interesting mystique. And they, of course, went on to inspire uh, numerous other bands and pretty much uh, led to the whole Britpop resurgence in the mid-90s. Uh, if it wasn't for the Stone Roses, you would not have bands like Oasis. So uh, Liam Gallagher himself has said that, you know, he went out after seeing the Stone Roses, he decided, hey, I want to go out and form a band myself. And a lot of other bands, I'm sure, followed suit. Like a lot of bands who were excited to get signed, just to get signed to a record deal, uh, the Stone Roses signed a shit deal on their initial uh, record deal. And they realized this, and they realized they weren't getting some of the money they should be getting due to all the success and stuff they were having. They had problems with their management, and uh, thought some of the money might be going to him too. So they basically got themselves into a nice, long, uh, protracted legal battle trying to get out of their old record contract so they could sign a new one. And that basically injuncted them from doing anything for a pretty good period of time. But in 1991, the band won their legal battle. In 1992, they signed with Geffen Records and got ready to put out their sophomore release, The Second Coming, which didn't come out for another further two years. So it was five years between their first album and their second album, which got released in December of 1994. And they uh, tried to get the ball rolling again, because that's a long chunk of time in the pop music world to like not have any activity going on. And, of course, like the second wave of Britpop was just starting to get started up. So it looked like, well, maybe we can ride this wave that we actually started. But problems ensued again. On the eve of the tour, uh, Drummy Rennie left the band. He was just kind of tired of it. And then uh, other problems would, would suit with that. John Squire got into a biking accident and broke his collarbone. And not long after that, he decided he was going to leave the band. And Ian Brown and Manny, uh, rather, uh, Gary Manny bass player decided to keep it going uh, and then Manny left and it all just kind of fell apart and uh, Ian Brown went on to have a semi-successful solo career released a number of solo albums John Squire would later form a band called the Seahorses in the mid 90s put out well, actually late 90s 97 to put out one album that did all right Manny joined Primal Scream another cool band from the Manchester scene and back in uh, 96 he was their bass player from then up until 2011 when the Stone Roses reunited which is the subject well, primarily of this documentary. And Rennie, the drummer, pretty much stayed mostly inactive during that whole time. Made of Stone is directed by Shane Meadows and chronicles the band's reunion in 2011 and subsequent 2000 tour, of two, uh, 2012 tour, which uh, accumulated in the band doing three shows in their hometown of Manchester at Heaton Park. It's a really great documentary which kind of chronicles that whole thing and also the history of the band and interspersed with that is like live concert footage footage of the band in rehearsal studio space and just kind of telling the stories of what was going on during that whole time and uh, even at one point it looked like things were all going to fall apart again possibly 
and director Shane Meadows was even unsure if the documentary was even going to finish. But luckily it did, and they left. he left us this great film, Made of Stone, which also features some great content footage. There's some cool studio rehearsal footage of, like, Waterfall, and an epic of what is already an epic song, an epic concert version of Fool's Gold uh, that is... Well, we're seeing great digital camera work and stuff throughout this film. I don't know if it necessarily is, but it, says it certainly looks it from what I can tell. But it's really, really, really well done. The DVD or the Blu-ray, which I have here, also features some uh, audio commentary from director Shane Meadows, the producer. Uh, Behind-the-scenes footage, uh, stuff that wasn't included in the movie, and of course, some additional concert footage also not featured in the film. But if you are a Stone Roses fan at all, or a British pop fan at all, um, early indie rock band, you owe it to yourself to go out and get Made of Stone, uh, a great music documentary among many from last year. You know, sort of I always see it as like this year thing, but who cares? It's good all the less. So, The Stone Roses, Made of Stone, available now. Go out and get it. Watch it. It's awesome. For me and Norm the Drowsy Dog, thanks for tuning in. We will catch you next time on Sit and Spin, where hopefully I'll actually have some new music to talk about. Actually, got a couple things that are coming out, one that just came out this week that I've been digesting, getting the thoughts ready, and that will probably be next week's show. If you've been following my post at all, maybe you know what it is. And we will see you then, next time on Sit and Spin. Take it easy. They uh, pretty much kickstarted 